way you do this is you grab this uh, suture needle with your needle driver, in this case the uh, Leatherman Squirt P4, and you just pull up and out, and you now have a needle. Alright guys, the unimaginable has happened. Your buddy has sustained a wound. You're in a remote wilderness environment, perhaps deployed in a remote tactical situation, but either way, difficult and austere conditions. You reach into your pocket and pull out your personal aid kit. The purpose of this video is to go over the uh, use of suture material in an austere environment. Let's just quickly go over POU or philosophy of use. In particular related to suturing, this should be a last resort closure method. Before suturing, you should understand and eliminate alternative closure methods. You should also understand the risks and complications of suturing, and you should also understand and practice the basic technique. Hopefully this video will go over those four points. Let's talk about cleaning the wound. If at all possible, the first thing you should do is wash your hands and use a pair of gloves. Use plenty of fresh water. Use an irrigating syringe to uh, irrigate out the wound. We'll go over later in the video how to make a field expedient irrigating syringe. Number three is probably the most important. Avoid hydrogen peroxide. I see this in a lot of first aid kits and it has no purpose in any first aid kit. Hydrogen peroxide is cytotoxic. It kills cells, which results in delayed healing and increased risk of infection. So get rid of the hydrogen peroxide. Number four, use dilute betadine for dirty wounds. Betadine should be used for wounds that are contaminated with dirty organic material. And again, when you decide to employ betadine, it should be dilute betadine. And after using it, the wound should be flushed with plenty of fresh water with your irrigating syringe. So to recap, hydrogen peroxide and betadine are cytotoxic. They kill cells, which results in delayed healing and increased risk of infection. If you're going to use one of the two, use betadine, use it very dilute and flush with water afterwards, and only use it for dirty wounds. The general tenet is don't put anything in a wound that you would not put in your eye. Let's go over suturing. Again, suturing should be the rare last resort option. There are plenty of things to do before that. One, you could do nothing. Two, you could put on a heavy gauze dressing with pressure and secure that in place. Three, you could use uh, something like steri strips, improvised butterfly dressings, Sometimes for minor wounds, you can even use glue. Again, suturing should be a last resort option and should be rarely employed. I'm not advocating the use of suturing in the field. The purpose of this video is to give you the techniques that if you decide to use it, and it's a last ditch effort, and you're in a remote, austere environment where there is no other option, I want you to at least have the tools and knowledge how to employ that suture that's in your aid kit. Let's go over suture materials. The best suture material for your aid kit is a monofilament suture material. And in general, it should be a large caliber uh, material such as 3O or 4O suture. The three and the four refer to the diameter of the suture material itself. The smaller those numbers, the bigger the material, and the higher those numbers, conversely, the thinner the material. So 6-0 nylon is very thin. Again, large caliber material is easy to use in difficult conditions. Fourth, use a large sweep cutting needle Again, this is easier to manipulate in difficult, austere conditions. If at all possible, and I recommend avoiding this completely, don't use silk. 
This is a polyfilament and results in a high risk of infection because of the multi-fibers.